guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a little more like vlog style and I just wanted to show you how I photograph my planner spreads and give you some tips because it's something and there's my cat. Hi Dit. There's some this is something that I struggled with for quite a while and honestly I'm not going to say I'm an expert. I do still struggle with photographing my planner spreads and getting it perfect because I'm a perfectionist. However, I have learned a lot since I've started and let's just jump right into it. I just wanna give you some of my tips. So this first tip is something that I think is very important. A lot of people, including used to be myself, I used to think that, you know, oh, in order for me to take these really beautiful planner spreads, I need to, you know, have like these really fancy expensive lights and I need to make sure it's a white background because that's what everyone else has and I, blah 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 and my first tip is utilize natural lighting so i am in my home office right now and you can see there's natural light coming in from the windows that are here to my left the most important thing i think is be sure to not put it in direct sunlight so let me just slide this over and show you so this is where it's kind of coming in the sun is directly shining on this particular spot and it just creates a lot of unflattering shadows and is kind of harsh. So just kind of move it around until you're in a good spot. And it doesn't have to be, like you can see, this is obviously too dark. And that's pretty even. Now you can see because the light is coming from the right, you'll see that there's shadows here of the discs. So you may wanna flip it around to get that perfect angle. Make sure we are totally in the shadow here. And you'll see it is still a little bit dark, right? And that's where the magic of editing comes in. So I'm gonna give you editing tips as well, so don't worry. All right, so this is the front of my planner. So obviously this isn't white. I know a big struggle a lot of us have when we use a white background is getting the white paper and the white background to be the same color. So I'm just gonna to flip to an old November spread because there's hardly anything on it. You just want to really make sure the light is even. That looks pretty even to me. Now, something else you can do that's totally optional. If you don't have a lot of, you know, props, um, you know, things that you want to use to just kind of add something to that background, you know, you can obviously take a picture with no props. Um, but just one tip I have is to utilize some die cuts that you have. These are from the Honeybee Shop and they are, they're actually stickers, but I laminated them. And that's because... I knew I wanted to use them around my spreads for my photos. So you can just kind of position those how, you know, how you think they look best. Got a journaling card there. So the biggest challenge with natural light is the inconsistency, right? Because the sun moves. Some days it's incredibly cloudy and you're gonna have, you know, barely any natural light. So I moved it to where we are completely in the shade. We've got our natural light coming in from the windows. But this is a great base, so we can go ahead and snap our photo. And I do take my photos with my smartphone. I used to, when I was first getting started, I used to use my DSLR. I am a photographer, and <laughs> I know a lot of photographers will say, oh my gosh, you take your photos with your phone, but phones have come such a long way that I honestly noticed that the difference between the photo taken with the phone and the photo taken with my DSLR for this particular subject, the difference really wasn't enough for me to, to mess with it. So I decided to make it easier on myself and just use my phone. If you have a decent phone, you should be able to just snap that photo right with your phone. Now you can also set it up so that you, uh, depending on which phone you have, you can set it up to take your photo as a square. If you like to do yours as squares for Instagram, I know you can also have them bigger. But typically for these, I like to take the photo wide and crop it later. I do turn on the uh, grid lines usually, but sometimes I may wanna use this for like a Facebook cover photo or a YouTube banner. So I don't wanna limit myself to the square, if that makes sense. All right, so my next tip here is for how to photograph in artificial lighting. Now you may think that I have some big fancy softbox lights and that obviously I do want some softbox lights. I've just been trying to uh, save my money a little bit. We're, you know, saving up for some things. So I decided to work with what I currently have and it may surprise you, <laughs> but it's two uh, desk lamps from Walmart. That's my filming setup. So anyway, as far as using this artificial lighting, now you'll see that 
with these it's kind of reflecting off there's a reflection here on this on this clear sticker I just like to kind of move the lights around some really just play with it put that here and your angle makes a huge difference too so as I lean more forward and you know take the video or take the photo from above at that kind of angle it really helps to eliminate the glare now you will see here i'm sure you recognize this background this is not my desk this is a poster board it's another tip i have for um you know photographing planner spreads if you're going to do it right on your desk and you hate the way your desk looks look at this desk uh <laughs> i don't hate this desk i actually love it it's a sentimental kind of thing. Um, it was my aunt's desk, actually, but this was like a dollar from Michael's. So I highly recommend just setting up a poster board right on your desk. And if you're going to use artificial lighting, you don't need anything really expensive. You can just use these cheap lamps from Walmart. And they will work just fine. And we'll snap the picture. All right, guys. So here is how I edit my photos. Now I do have, you know, professional photo editing software. I have Adobe Lightroom. I have Adobe Photoshop. I have all kinds of photo editors, but I found again, like I said before, with using my phone to take pictures instead of using my DSLR, I find that editing in an app like PicTap Go, which I actually learned about from my friend Katie over at Katie did plans on Instagram. She, Katie did underscore plans. I'll put her handle in the description box, but she told me about this app in a group chat that we were in when we were talking about how we edit our photos and stuff. And she mentioned this app and it's not a free app. It does cost money, but I believe it was $2.99, like $3. It was very inexpensive. And I went online and I just read what some other people were saying about it. And they said that it's, it's so great. It's worth the money. So I wanted to show you how I use it to edit my planner photos. And again, I could use Lightroom, I could use Photoshop, but this makes it quick and easy. And since I am taking the photos right on my phone, it's all right there. So I'm gonna tap on this one, one that we took on the desk with the artificial lighting. I'm gonna hit edit. And here is why PicTap Go is worth the money, okay? Now you'll see here at the bottom, there's an ad for PicTap Go Plus. I don't have that, I'm, I don't really know and it says free download. Yeah, it's free to download it, but it's not free. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure what the benefits are of that. So I'm just going to show you. This is PicTap Go, which does cost money. I believe it's $2.99. If I'm wrong, I will let you know in the description box or I'll put something on the screen. Anyway, recipes is what makes PicTap Go worth it. You can save recipes to edit your photos. So basically what a recipe is, say I start with this photo and I go here under adjustments and I go to light, contrast, and then I go to filters and I just start kind of choosing the ones that I like. And then you scroll, you can choose another one. I really like this one called peer pressure. You can change the intensity with the slider. I can crop it right here in the app. I wanna make sure it's on one one if I want it to be square. If I wanted to be 4-3, I could do it like that. 3-2, 16-9, just whatever you want. Um, but for Instagram, for the square, you want to keep it on the one-to-one uh, -one ratio. So I could kind of crop it like that. So then you go to go and you see here down here where it says save recipe. It saves all those adjustments that you made and you could just name it. So what I do is, and this is how I'm going to hit undo on everything. I want to start back at the beginning. Okay, so we'll go back to this photo. This is what I do. My style, recipes, and then here's the recipes I have down here. So you'll see here I have this one named November 2020 white background, pink background, planner pics, August 20, black and white selfies. Like I have different recipes saved down here. So this IG planner pics, August 2020 is what I've been using recently. And then I'll choose that and I can change the intensity if I'd like. And me personally, I tend to crop in Instagram. I just think it's a little bit easier. And I go to go and save to my camera roll. Now, here's the other benefit, okay? I'm gonna go to this different one here. So this one has a white background. 
I know a lot of you guys use white backgrounds. So I'm going to go to recipes and you see here it says November 2020 white background. I had set that up for when I have a white background just to make it easier so you can see that's what it was before, that's after. And obviously with using natural lighting it is going to change depending on you know how intense the sun is that day and you know your conditions and what exactly you're photographing and all that so it's not always going to be the same but you can keep it pretty consistent so I'm going to go to go and then I'm going to hit batch and this is brilliant so if you take a bunch of photos of the same thing or in the same setting on the same background say you took this planner photo and then you took like a close-up of a sticker you know in that same setting and you want to apply the exact same settings you could just click another image and hit apply to two images and then it applies all those settings to the other one and you can just hit save to camera roll so I'm going to open up my camera roll now so here's the two and then that's the one that we edited so that's the original and that's the edited version now I'm going to show you how I edit within Instagram because I do I do some like fine tuning and again I usually crop within Instagram I just find it to be easier I crop and straighten within Instagram so for this say I want to share the full I don't want to crop it into a square I'm just going to show you if you wanted it to not be square and you wanted it to be more rectangular so you can go here and straighten it if the left looks like it like if it looks like it's not even you can actually change the perspective which I do quite often you can go back here move it around now you'll see that my white background is not blinding like the white isn't blinding you and that's I do that on purpose I don't like when I see planar pixels look like this I know a lot of people do that you you do you but I don't like to be blinded when I open up Instagram and I can't even, you know, hardly read the text because it's just blinding. And I understand that people have different editing styles and preferences. We can just go in here and make changes until you're happy with it. I usually end up t turning the warmth down a little bit uh, when I use the white background because my white background has a little bit of like an off-white color rather than a true white, which can be frustrating. Um, and you can go in here and choose filters. I like to keep it pretty consistent because I do use the filters in Pick, Tap, Go. I like to also, you know, keep it consistent with the filter I'm using in Instagram. Juno is one that I use very frequently, but I don't turn it all the way up like this. I usually just do about like 25. And those are the changes. Okay, I'm going to show you on this one how I edit. It. And for this one, I'm going to make it a square just to change it up a little bit. So say I just wanted to display like that. I'm gonna go here, edit, adjust, straighten it some. When I'm using this wooden background, I really like to make sure my lines are straight, like the lines on the wood, I mean. And for the wood background, I tend to, um, for the wood background, I tend to use the gingham filter, but I turn it like way down. I just barely use it. So it's about, again, at 25. Dang it, accidentally. <laughs> there we go. So it's about at 25 for gingham. And then I go to edit, up the contrast a little bit, just kind of play around with it. I try not to obsess over my feed too much. I do like it to look a certain way and like it to look pretty, you know, fairly consistent, but I'm not going to stress myself out over my feed anymore. But that is how I choose to edit my photos. And I'll just show you one more thing. I'm going to show you how I would edit this one were it a square instead of a rectangle. So I would just kind of do it like that and just show that creepy but cute die cut that I love so much. Again, with the white background, I tend to use the Juno filter, but I only put it on about 25. Up the contrast a little bit. Turn the warmth down. Another thing you can do is turn the saturation down. If you feel like the colors are popping too much, it's really going to change for every photo that you're editing. 
but you want to keep it, you know, you want to make it as easy as possible on yourself. So that's where I think pick tap go really comes in handy. But you can see here on my feed that I don't use a lot of white backgrounds. I pretty much only use a white background when I don't have another one that will work for me. And I edit in a way where, again, you can still see the dots. There's a lot of people who make it so bright that you can't even see the dots on dot grid, where it's just really like washed out and, you know, just in your face. And then you can see here that I used a pink background. So on Pick Tap Go, I had that one recipe for the pink background. This one's just called Pink Background, and that one I had just set to make sure that all the photos with the pink background, like these here, were consistent. And with the white background, you know, I try to keep it looking pretty consistent from photo to photo. And then these with the um, black background that were a little bit darker, I had a different recipe on Pick Tap Go to make them all look pretty consistent. It's never going to be perfect and you're always going to, you know, see after you post and be like, oh, I should have fixed that. I should have done that. But that is how I edit my planner photos. I highly recommend Pick Tap Go. It's very inexpensive. So that's how the photo started. That's the original photo. And then that's how it would look finished for Instagram. So I hope this was beneficial for you guys. I hope it helped you out. And let me know if you have, you know, any, any questions about editing or taking pictures. I, I just want to reiterate that you do not need to use artificial lighting to make your photos look nice. You can obviously just use, you know, open up your curtains and whatever sun is coming in, you can use that. But again, like I said earlier in the video, I would really just recommend that you try to keep your... Uh, poster board and your you know whatever you're photographing out of the direct sunlight just kind of keep it in the shadow but you still have the natural light providing the light for your image but um you know natural light can be inconsistent it's you're really relying on the weather that day so it's sometimes really helpful to use something like this where you have artificial lighting but like, I, but like I said before, you do not need anything fancy. I have two desk lamps from Walmart. I've had them for years. They work perfectly fine for me. I absolutely love them. And yeah, until I am ready to get some big softbox lights that are maybe a little bit uh, more consistent. And I do plan to have them like on the floor so they're not taking up desk space. This works for me. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys and um, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload because I am uploading one video every single day in the month of December up through the 25th. And then I will continue to have content one to two days a week after that. So. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye!